virtual etiquettes and reminders po. So, first po, keep your microphones on mute at all times and unmute if requested. So, for today's um, webinar po is naka, un, naka disable naman po yung ating mga microphones po to be um, enabled na lang po if um, need namin ng inyong participation. And second, we encourage full interaction throughout the session. You So, you may use the chat or comment section if you have any questions po. For the Zoom naming format, so we are requesting everyone to um, follow our naming convention with the organization or school name and your name. So for example po, if the ICT Region 4A, thus, thus Jerica Dalitay. Ayan. And also, attendance link will be shared in our chat box at the end of the session. So, this attendance po will uh, be our reference po kung sino po yung mabibigyan ng ating digital certificate. And lastly, have a, have a bottle or glass of water with you to rehydrate every now and then. So, we, are, we will be having a two-hour session po for this training. So, make sure po na meron kayo mga tubig. Um, na malapit po sa inyo. To formally start po our training, um, we will be having po our short prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Heavenly Father, the fount of all goodness and grace, the cause of wisdom, the source of intelligence. We welcome you, O Lord, to this meaningful gathering of your beloved, who continuously give you thanks for every opportunity to learn something new and become fruitful to the works of your creation. May we find bliss in today's session and become more productive children and co-creators of the earth. This we ask and pray through Christ the Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Heavenly Father, the fount of all goodness and grace, the cause of wisdom, the source of intelligence. We welcome you, O Lord, to this meaningful gathering of your beloved, who continuously give you thanks for every opportunity to learn something new and become fruitful to the works of your creation. May we find bliss in today's session and become more productive children and co-creators of the earth. This we ask and pray through Christ the Lord. Amen. So, ayan, once again, welcome po. And I'm Richelle Arquilita, your host for this afternoon po. And also, we are um, asking for your permission to record this um. Uh, webinar for this afternoon po. So, kindly accept na lang po yung magpa-prompt sa inyong mga Zoom meeting if you permit us to record po this webinar po. Ayan. Okay, everyone. Um, Nandito na po yung ating speaker, kasama na natin. So, may we check lang po kung, nas, kung saan uh, lugar po tayo nandito sa uh, Pilipinas, kung saan po kayo na nunood or kung meron tayong kasama from other parts of the world. Ayan, so, Calabarzon, nakita ko na ang mga probinsya ng Calabarzon. Kalamba, yes. May Bicol din. Recording in progress. Muntinlupa, ayan. Baguio City. Ayan. Thank you so much po. Thank you so much po sa mga sumasagot po sa ating chat. Ayan. 
So for this month nga po, no, we are celebrating the National ICT Month uh, with a theme connecting communities, enriching lives, forging a digital future for the Philippines. So we are uh, having a series of activities po, pero not only this month, but throughout the year naman po is meron kaming kinoconduct po na mga training. So this training po is under the ICT, ILTDB and under the Tech for Ed project. So without uh, further ado, may we call on Ma'am Jerica Dalisay to um, introduce our speaker po. For a while po. Um, ako na pala po ang mag-introduce ng ating speaker for today. So our speaker to for today is a uh, Chief Product and Technology Officer of Bitskuela, a Web3 EduTech startup focused um, on providing locally accessible and education on emerging digital te technologies in Web3. She, is, she also worked as a project manager in PNG, bringing her prior experience in freelancing for both Web2 and Web3 clients in UX, web development, and product management. So without further ado, let us all welcome our resource person for today, Ms. Camille. Puente Spina. Hi, ma'am. Good afternoon po. Thank you. Good afternoon. Thank you, Miss Rachel. So, share ko lang sandali yung screen ko. Okay, ma'am. Kamusta naman kayo lahat? Okay lang ba? <laughs> Dami pala natin. Taka lang po. Yes, ma'am. And currently, we are live on our official Facebook page, the ICT uh, Region 4A Calabarzon po. Wow, ayun. Ah, yeah. uh, sorry, nakikita na ba yung screen ko? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Ay, tama ba yung shiner ko? Mali pala. <laughs> Wait lang. Wait lang. Ayan. Okay. Okay. All right, so hello everyone. Uh, magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat. Uh, ako nga po pala si Kams. So, wait, naka full screen po ba yung akin? Hindi pala. Ayan. Okay, ayan. Ako nga po pala si Kams um, from Bitskuela. At I'm very excited to hold this session with you guys. No? Uh, ilan ba tayo dito? 232 sa Zoom pa lang. Tapos meron pa tayong live. Um, yes, yes. Mga tao. we are joined by our live audience here in BPC Calabar Zone po. Ayun, hello, hello po. Uh, magandang hapon din sa inyo. So, um, very excited to share with you guys a topic that's close to my heart. Uh, isa po sa very exciting and upcoming technologies. No? Um, and of course, bago tayo magsimula, gusto ko lang sana ma- malaman pa about you guys. So, alam ko, nagtanong na si Ms. Rachel sa inyo kung saan kayo nang galing, no? Um, pero siguro, siguro mag-aano muna tayo ng konting laro, konting papol. Uh, gusto ko lang malaman kung, ano, kung saan kayo nang gagaling, ba? Diba? Hindi lang sa kung saan kayo nang galing na location, uh, pero pati yung pagkakaintindi nyo sa Web3 at uh, mga technologies doon. So, kung pwede, kita ba yung whole screen ko? Baka pwede nyo pong iscan yung QR code, ayan, or pwede nyo pong itype yung ano na lang, yung nakalink po dyan. Ayan. So, konting laru-laru lang tayo dito. <laughs> Ayun, sumasagot na pala yung mga tao. Ayan. So, yung first question ko, um, kita naman yung screen ko dun sa, ano, Mr. Chal, no? Nakita naman? Yes, ma'am. Yes, po. So, yung first tanong ko is, saan kayo nang galing, diba? Uh, tinanong na din ni Ms. Rachel, kaya sabi ko sakto, tinanong na din yun. Uh, so, kita natin, wow, madami sa Luzon, of course. Kasi, 
Siyempre, supportado din tayo ng DICT Region 4A. Salamat po. Uh, kita natin na ang dami na 84% yung ating nasa Luzon. Pero naitaw meron din tayong NCR Visayas Mindanao. Actually, uh, ako mismo, pr- 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 probinsya ko po is nasa Davao. So, hello sa mga taga Mindanao dyan. Ayun. <laughs> okay. I think sakto na. Next question. Um, ano po yung preferred language nyo? So, gusto ko pong uh, i-craft yung aking pagsasalita, di ba? Kung sa ano yung preferred na lengguahe ng pagsasalita. Okay. Okay naman. Most naman taglish or mix. So, uh, I'll be mixing. Um, Tatry ko po medyo, baka magiging konyo siya ng onte Pero, tatry ko po na mas maintindihan, no? Mas relax yung ating pananalita. So, I'll do taglish. Okay. Sige, eto po. Gano'n kayo ka-familiar with Web3? Or gano'n kayo kabisad yung Web3? Ayan. Okay. Karamihan sa atin, nandun pa lang no, sa, pas- sa pagsimula. So, hindi pa kabisado. Medyo kabisado. Okay. Ayan. Pero huwag kayong mag-alala. Very, yung kaya nga tawag, di ba, sa ta- title ng ating talk ngayon is basic. Kasi gusto natin talagang maintindihan yung uh, simple concepts of Web3. So, huwag kayong mag-alala. Uh, Saktong-sakto, andito ako para matulungan kayo on that. Tsaka, syempre, kung may matutunan din ako sa inyo. Okay. Sunod na po tayo. Next is, narinig niyo na po ba ang Bitskwela? Or have you heard of Bitskwela? Ayun. Marami-rami pa yung hindi nakakaalam. So, don't worry. Uh, papakilalanin ko din kayo sa Bitskwela mamaya. Uh, pero, ayoko po parang i-hard sell sa inyo kung ano yung skwela, ano? Uh, papakita ko na lang po kung yung ginagawa namin. At is, isa to sa mga ginagawa namin for uh, different companies, different agencies, um, tsaka sa ibang, iba't ibang communities. So, ayan, sakto. Okay. Ang last question is, how excited are you dito sa webinar? Gano po kayo kasabik? Ayan. O, oh, grabe naman. Saan naman po walang magsasabi ng hindi na nasasabik eh, no? <laughs> okay. Pero mukha namang uh, karamihan sa inyo ay nasasabik na. O, oh, diba? So, thank you again sa pagdalo. Uh, alam ko na, alam mo, busy yung Tuesdays nyo. Pero salamat po sa pagbigay ng uh, two hours nyo for this webinar. Uh, and I'll try to make uh, your hours for this well worth it. Okay? So, sigur? Sige, magsimula na tayo. Uh, thank you sa pag-join din pala uh, sa ating session. Um, ano ba siya? Paano ko ba ito i-big screen? Sige, okay na siguro yan. <laughs> May ganun na lang sa taas. Ayan. So, hello po. Uh, Intro ko lang po ulit sa sarili ko. Ako nga po pala si Cams. Uh, full name ka po, Camille Pantaspina. So you guys can add me po sa Facebook. Ganun kung may tanong po kayo or what. Uh, pero para mas mapadali yung buhay natin, pwede niyo po akong tawagin Cams. Ayan. So currently, ako yung Chief Product and Technology Officer of Bitskwela. Um, so essentially, yung ginagawa ko po para sa kompanya namin is to introduce new products, new technologies, um, tsaka to make the whole process po, yung experience po ng ating mga uh, pinuturuan no, sa Web3 a lot more simpler, uh, a lot easier. Ayan. Aside from that po, meron pa akong day job, which is project manager po ako ng Procter and Gamble. Ayan. And of course, on the side din, uh, freelancer din po ako. So, nag-freelance po ako ng web development. Uh, gumagawa po ako ng websites, ng apps, ayan. Uh, in both Web 2 and Web 3. Ayan. Um, and then sa org ko po, or, uh, outside of the work po, uh, I'm actually the previous president of User Experience Society. So, hindi ko po alam kung narinig na po yung UX na term. Ano? Pero uh, the whole idea of UX po is essentially being able to um, improve the whole experience of the people that in, the, subscribe to uh, your product. Ayan. And then, lastly po, actually, nang galing po ako sa ADMU, so sinabi ko po, galing ako Davao, di ba? Yun po yung prov- province ko. Um, pero pagka uh, college ko po, I moved to Manila. Tapos, uh, sa ADMU po ako ng college. And I graduated po last year lang uh, as magna cum laude. Ayan. So, if you guys want to follow any of my socials, uh, pwede niyo po i-follow at Camille Jillian. So, yan po yung nasa Facebook ko at nasa Instagram. Ayan, kita-kits na lang tayo. Ayan. 
So, going back na po ano, kung ano yung talagang topic na pag-uusapan natin. Sorry. Topic na pag-uusapan natin for today's um today's video. Kumbaga, <laughs> ayan. Um uh, we have here web3. So, ano nga ba yung web3, 'di ba? Uh very interesting topic to siya. Um and it's something that's fairly new. Um and you'll see why. Uh, of course, bakit nga ba siya Web3 tinawag in the first place, di ba? Bago tayo mag uh, pumasok sa talagang sa mga um, topics. Oops. Ayan. Paano ba tala ko yan? Ayan. Bago tayo pumasok sa topics about Web3 um, or our definition talaga ng Web3, pag-usapan muna natin yung history, di ba, ni Web3 at bakit nga ba siya tinawag na Web3 in the first place. Ayan. So, uh, going back to 1960, ano, Um, it's not actually, well, it's not a secret na talagang yung internet, it's shaped the way that we see the world now. Sino ba ang hindi sa inyo naka-access ng internet, ano, or hindi nagagamit yung internet day, by, day to day? I think most of us, if not all, talagang naging kompanya na si internet uh, as, we, as we do our everyday work. And in fact, uh, going back to, going way all back to 1960, actually, ito din yung year na napanganak yung papa ko pa, o oh, ba? Diba? So, alam mo na yung, um, yung gano'n siya katagal. Um, essentially, very young pa siya at this point, and hindi pa nga siya, hindi pa siya mo, immobile pa siya, if you think about it. Um, at this point in time, 1960s, actually, mga gobyerno pa lang gumagamit. Nag-share lang sila ng information from one government to another, ganun. Um, and of course, very manual. Actually, at this point, wala pang ang cellphone, wala pang computers. Uh, they were even just using magnetic tapes no, at this point. Um, and of course, as technology went further, mas naiintindihan natin kung ano yung capabilities ng internet. Um, fast forward to 1983, it evolved. Now it became a protocol. So ano bang tawag, ano bang pagkakaintindihan natin sa protocol, no? In an easier, in a simpler sense, yung protocol, uh, para siyang communication channel. So, in 1983, naging nag-bridge siya into applications where internet can allow you to communicate from one point to the other. Ganun yung protocol, di ba? And in that way, naging easier for us to communicate with other people. Uh, it allowed individuals to really get from one point to the other. Uh, through the internet. And kaya doon natin, doon nag yung idea of World Wide Web. O, oh, syempre, narinig nyo na yan, di ba? Yung nakikita nyo sa, for example, sa mga URL nyo, yung nasa taas, di ba? May www. Yun yung World Wide Web. And that's how we frame it up today. So, why am I talking about the whole thing about a World Wide Web and all that, no? Kasi, syempre, yung, yung pinag-uusapan natin, Web3. So, Uh, yung whole concept of the web uh, essentially stems from that, from the communication between one channel to the other. Now, uh, bakit nga ba three na? Bakit number three na? Yun nakalagay. So actually, yung history ng web three, nanggaling pa yan sa one, sa two, sa three. Uh, so ngayon, kaya dito na tayo sa three, di ba? Si one kasi, if you think about the early days of web, web one, isipin nyo, Alam niyo yung mga Yahoo News. Hindi ko alam kung nakakaano pa kayo doon. Mga, kung hanggang ngayon, nag tumitingin pa kayo sa mga news online, gano'n. Essentially, sa so Web 1, talagang static yung web pages. Static? Ano ba yung term na static? Hindi siya interactive, di ba? It's one point. So, for example, ako, ito yung web page. Ako, ako to, nag interact ako, pero hindi na siya nag interact back sa akin. Gano'n. Uh, static siya in a sense na, yun nga, walang interactivity between the two parties. Of course, it was only meant for reading. So actually, think of yung mga, kunwari may mga recipe kayo, panlasang Pinoy, ganun, titingnan nyo. Di ba? Parang it's only meant for reading, not for consumption, unless may part na siya na nag-interact ka na uh, sa mismong webpage. Of course, yun, no interaction nga siya. So, hindi, hindi siya nag-require ng something to receive from you. Yun yung whole concept ng Web1. Doon nagsimula yung Web1. Wala pa yung, wala pa nung Facebook, wala pa nung YouTube, di ba? Ganun yun. So, mga 1990s yun to 2005. I'm sure, karamihan sa inyo dyan, ganun na yung na-experience na yan na time. Ngayon, nag-move, di ba? After 2005, 
uh, up to the present ngayon, nakita natin yung mga social media. Yung social media, if you think about it, parang mas dynamic na yung content. So, in a sense, dynamic versus static, yung dynamic, may reception na from you and ikaw may, nab- may nabibigay kabalik, right? Gumagalaw yung content and in a way, yung data mo, yung data na na-receive nung mismong server or nung mismong website, nagagalaw siya. So, for example, magsasearch ka dyan sa Google, di ba? Sasearch ka, ano, um, sasearch ka best restaurant in, ano, in Manila, ganon. Papansinin mo, susunod na mga araw, magpapakita yan ng mga ads sa'yo, ng mga uh, iba't ibang mga restaurants, no? Parang nakaka-capture yung data mo. Ayan. So, yun yung mga algorithms na napapasok dito sa Web2 uh, na nag- nagta-transform sa internet and how we see it. Of course, like, like we see it, di ba? With interaction na rin siya, gumagalaw na siya with you. Yun na nakita natin hanggang ngayon. Now, what is Web3? Kung ganun, kung ganun yung Web1, may static, di ba? Tapos ang Web2 naman dynamic, yung Web3, ano, ano pang pwedeng iiba dun, di ba? Wala, maano. <laughs> sorry, sorry talaga umuulan dito. So, uh, sabihin niya na lang kung hindi niya narinig yung sinasabi ko. Yan. Pero, essentially, Web3, sinasabi nila, future daw siya. So, bakit nga ba siya future, di ba? Ano bang meron sa kanya na talagang gumagalo ng ganon? Or don't worry, hindi ko pa kayo sas, hindi ko pa sasabihin ko yung definition ng Web3, di ba? Pupuntahan muna natin, ano ba yung naging problema ng Web2? Bakit pa kailangan ng Web3 in the first place? No? Yun yung tanong eh. Bakit kung eh, lahat naman ng tao gumagamit na ng social media, lahat naman ng tao nag ng content, bakit kailangan pa ng Web3? Ngayon, puntahan muna natin yung numbers, yung statistics. Actually, ngayon, very interestingly, yung internet users super bliss ng paggrow niya. If you see from the trend, right, uh, moving from 1991, dito pa, dito pa, nagsisimula pa yung internet, hanggang sa last year lang, 2022, it's been over 5 billion yung, may in, yung internet users natin across the world. So napakarami ng tao na nakasubscribe, na on board sa Web2, right, on the digital space. And the reason being is because yung Web2 kasi, di ba, parang dynamic siya and it's a lot of sharing. Social media nga, so social siya. Now, if you think about it, kunwari ano ka, kunwari ikaw yung, di ba, anak ka, ganun. Tapos, eh, kamusado mo Facebook. Eh, tapos yung mama mo, hindi pa nag-Facebook, so nagtatanong siya, ano ba tong Facebook, ganun. So, na-onboard mo, parang ito yung Facebook, ganun. Ilan ba sa inyo, di ba, karamihan sa atin, ganun din naman yung naging narrative. Kung hindi, Lola, ay kung hindi mama, eh, lola, or tatay, o uh, kapatid, or kahit ano man. In a way, may pag-introduce tayo nung, nung mga social media channels na yon to the different people. So, mas nagiging uh, mabilis yung pag-grow niya. Kasi nga, nasa-share natin across different uh, people. So, dumadami ng dumadami. Um, and exponential yung pag-grow natin si internet. So, bakit siya naging problema? Okay, so, yun nga, maayos. Maayos naman, di ba? Parang dumadami yung mga tao, dumadami na kakaintindi ng technology na to sa internet. Ngayon, ang naging problema kasi is, so, for example, si Facebook, dumadami nga yung mga tao, di ba? E, libre din naman Facebook, okay lang. Pero, sino bang kumikita? Si Facebook lang din, sa dami ng ano. Alam niyo ba, na statistic show, na in Spotify, sino ba nagsa-Spotify sa inyo? Nakikinig sa music, di ba? Lipa naman siya, of course. Pero alam niyo ba sa, sa Spotify, 90% of streaming royalties only go to the top 1.4% of musicians. Karamihan ng nagbibigay ng content na musicians, yung mga bagong mga bagong kumakanta, mga bagong actors or singers, di ba? Sa so, channel, they don't get monetized for the work that they do. Kahit man, dumadami yung revenue ni Spotify sa mga nakikinig sa kanila. Sa Twitch, I don't know kung baka mas hindi nyo kabisado yung Twitch, pero yung Twitch kasi parang gaming platform, eh, gaming streaming platform yan. Ayan. So, yung mga uh, gamers natin, nagpapakita sila ng kanilang content, binivideo nila, sarili nila, or nagla-live din sila. Um, and essentially, 
Uh, alam niyo ba sa Twitch, only 1% of all the streamers actually earn more than half of all the revenue. So ang laki ng small portion of that group of Twitch users ang talagang actually niya hahagamit. And of course, in podcast, diba? yung mga podcast, yung mga bagong ano ngayon, content ngayon, um, actually, only 1% of podcasters claim the majority of podcast revenue. So nasuskew siya. Ang dami ng mga tao na hindi talaga na-reward para sa content na binibigay nila. So in a sense, parang libre lang yung na nabibigay, kumbaga, or na, na-acquire. So this is where Web3 comes into play. Right? So, essentially, Web3, now that we understand kind of ano yung naging challenge, di ba? At bakit pumunta tayo sa Web3, gusto lang maintindihan kung, and siguro chat nyo na lang dito, kung ano yung pagkakaintindi nyo sa Web3 given yung challenges na, pinag, na sinabi ko kanina. Ayan. So, lagay nyo lang if it's A, B, or C, di ba? Ayan. So, A, what is Web3? A, Web3 is a decentralized internet. B, Web3 is an ownership economy. Or C, Web3 is an internet that uses crypto. Ayan. Sige, pwede kayong mag-chat dyan kung ano yung ano nyo. Okay. Karamihan sa sumasagot ay C, nakikita ko yung mga A. O, may sumasagot ng all. A, B, C daw. Okay. Okay. Ayan, sige. Okay, I see. Sige, all. All of the above. Okay. Sige, tingnan natin kung anong sagot. Actually, Web3 is all of the above. Correct nga. It's all of that and more. Uh, i-cover ko yan all in one. No? I-one by one natin yung, yung bakit ganun nga yung tatlo. So Web3 is the iteration of the internet that enables true digital ownership using cryptocurrencies and blockchain technology. Pretty handful, no? Parang, ano ba yan? Daming, ang daming ebos nito. Parang sobrang complicated naman. Uh, so, cover natin yan. Pero gusto ko lang i-emphasize, first, true digital ownership. Babalikan natin yan in a while. Cryptocurrencies. Baka narinig nyo lang yun, di ba? Uh, pero kukover natin, ano ba yung meaning talaga ng cryptocurrencies? Ano nga ba talaga yung, yung concepts niya involved? And of course, yung blockchain technology. Eto, Very interesting part din to. Siko cover din natin yan, of course. Let's focus more on the simple, no? True digital ownership. Parang nagigets naman natin yun. True, totoo siya, digital. Digital nga, nasa online siya. Uh, at ownership. Uh, so may pagmamayari ka. Ayan. So let's see. What is true digital ownership? The idea is that, yun nga, users are actually able to own parts of the internet. Imagine if you own a part of the World Wide Web, di ba? As in, meron ka talagang pagmamayari dung World Wide Web na yun. Uh, you know, in, a, in different forms to, pwedeng iba't ibang forms. Uh, but the whole concept of Web3 is may ownership ka nga. Kumikita ka, kumbaga. Kumikita ka sa Web3, may receive ka or may portion of asset ka sa mismong internet. Ayan. Now, how does it look like in a in an actual sense? Tapos alam ko, baka marami sa inyong nagti-TikTok dito. So, yun yung gagawin nating example. Ano? So, Web2 is a platform-centric economy, right? Yung Web2 yung current space natin ngayon. And si TikTok, isa yan sa mga Web2, a leading top Web2 companies, right? So, tingnan natin. So, meron tayo, for example, si Glenn. Ayan, si Glenn, nagti-TikTok siya. Yun. Tapos, ayan, sikat si Glenn eh. Mahilig siya mag-send, mahilig siya mag-ano, renegade, renegade, gano'n. Uh, mahilig siyang sumayaw, for example. Tapos may audience siya, so may mga followers siya sa TikTok niya. Ngayon, um, yung nangyayari, ito may iba din tayong mga tao. Si Luis, si Mad, si Gono, si Bob. Ito naman sila, hindi masyadong sikat, right? Uh, nagsisimula pa lang sa TikTok. Ayan. Tapos ngayon, parang nag Nag, may own din silang followers nila na nag-receive ng content na yon or ng mga videos na ginagawa nila. So, ano pagkaka, pagkakaiba, di ba? Si Glenn, mas maraming followers. So, the idea ni TikTok is, of course, yung advertising revenue, right, ibibigay nila kay Glenn yung majority 
nung ano. Kasi nga, mas marami siyang followers. Si Louis, si Mad, si Gono, si Bob. Malit lang naman. So, hindi pa sila na garner ng uh, ilang advertising, ba diba? Technically, in that sense, parang si Glenn lang talaga yung kumikita despite the fact na same lang naman, nag effort na naman. Marami namang ginagawa sila Louis, Mads, Gono, and Bob na work. Pero actually, ang interesting part here is kahit nandyan si Glenn, kahit malaki yung nakukuha ni Glenn, kahit malaki yung nakukuha ni Louis, Mads, Gono, Bob, alam niyo ba na napakaliit lang actually niyan versus the revenue na nakukuha ni TikTok in the first place. So imagine nyo if, kunwari tatanggalin natin yung gitnang part, diba? yung middleman, what if Glenn supplies it or si Louis, si Mads, si Gono, si Bob, so supply sila diretso sa kanilang audience, di ba? So yung no one ng or yung ano din, yung traction na no one ng audience, yung advertising revenue na yon, diretso na doon sa mga tao. Now kuha nila yon in a form through web3, diretso, right? Hindi na nila kailangan ng middleman kumbaga na talagang magkukuha ng a big fraction of that um of that revenue. So yun yung pinaglalaban ni Web3, di ba? Medyo simple ang concept siya. Siyempre, in a, in a bigger sense, medyo mas complicated siya. Pero ganun mo maintindihan how the money flows in a Web3 economy. Ayan. So, essentially, Web3 scales back ownership towards their creators and their users. And how do they do that, right? Kung hindi man si TikTok yung nagdidistribute, kung hindi man any other platform yung nagbibigay sa kanila agad ng revenue, eh di sino? Or papaano? So dito napupunta natin, napapasok natin yung blockchain and yung cryptocurrencies. Yan. So na nga ba yung blockchain and cryptocurrencies? First, sim- yung mas simple tayo, cryptocurrency. Madedivide natin ito, et- ito into two parts. So first, crypto and then yung currency. Crypto is derived from the idea ng cryptography, o, di ba? For sure, kabisad na yung cryptography. Different ways na parang puzzles, kumbaga. For example, isipin mo yung pub puzzles. Rubik's Cube, ganun, kumbaga. Diba? Parang it needs a form of um, a code, for example, na kailangan mo muna i- i-secure, i-understand para naman ma-reveal mo yung sagot or ma-reveal mo yung tamang forma ng Rubik's Cube. Same din yung concept dito. Although in this sense, gumagamit lang siya ng techniques to secure the communication between uh, between one point to another in order to avoid yung mga bad actors natin. Ayan. So, think, isipin mo, kung may, kung may password, ganun. May password siya, dadaanan niya yung password uh, para umabot at ma, ma-transfer kumbaga yung isang bagay sa isa pa. Okay. So, yun yung crypto. Gets ba? Covered naman. Ayan. So, eto example lang. So, for example, si Pedro. Mayroon si Pedro tsaka si Darna. Ayan, mag, ano daw sila? Mag, friends sila. Ayan. Isipin nyo na sa classroom setting. Ayan. Pedro tsaka si Darna, mag-classmates. Ayan. Tapos sabi nila, okay, ganito. Um, may, parang ayaw nila ma-reveal sa ibang classmates nila kung ano yung sinasabi nila. So, eto, uh, Darna, sabi ni Pedro. Eto, Darna. Uh, so, ang A natin uh, is 1, meaning yan 1. Ang B is 2, ang C is 3, and ang D is 4. So, pag magsisend ka sa akin, dapat ganito yung code. Yan, 1, 2, 3, 4. Kung nga sasabihin mo, B, C, ganun, ganun. For example, si Pedro, sasab- sasabi siya, A, D, C. Ganun, dar na, A, D, C, ganun. So, meaning pala nun, 1, 4, 3, I love you daw. Tara! <laughs> Ayan, pero ganun yung idea, ba? Diba? Ganun yung simpler concept of how Uh, or what cryptocurrency, uh, crypto or cryptography looks like. Ayan. Ngayon, uh, we go to the currency side. Ano nga ba yung currency? Currency is essentially medium of exchange or a money system, right? Currency, kunwari, uh, mga dolyares, mga peso natin, di ba? Uh, even yung, kung isipin mo yung mga um, sa Gcash, di ba? Kunwari yung coins doon. Or sa Shopee, di ba? May Shopee coins din. Those are essentially currencies because they are medium of exchange. So, pwede mo siyang ibigay sa isa or pwede mong ma-receive yun. And, syempre, may, usually may reward or may uh, item of exchange yan. Kahit barter trading, ganun. So, essentially, yun yung crypto and yung currency. So, it's a monetary system 
but it's back. Right? It's my cryptography na nangyayari or na, my securing ng communication ng pagta-transfer ng pera sa isang parte over to another one. So instead, isipin mo, instead of just, ako, ako, kunwari ako, bibigyan kita ng ano, 100 pesos, ayan, o, ayan, 100 pesos. Ang cryptocurrency naman, may in-between siya, right, na nag, na nag, ano, nagsisecure sa kanya para hindi lang agad na parang ako lang to you uh, at nas, na, na pro-protect siya from someone na biglaan magnanakaw. No, kunwari, pag hand over ko sa'yo, may magnanakaw agad, ganun. Uh, doon, may, na, may nasa-secure na process doon sa cryptocurrency, right? Essentially, cryptocurrency is a type of digital currency secured by cryptography. Ang main concept niya or main characteristic niya is it's nearly impossible to counterfeit or hack. Um, at makikita natin yan in some of the use cases mamaya. Ayan. Now, ano ba yung main idea of cryptocurrency? And it's decentralized. Narinig nyo, from the first item, yung tinanong ko sa inyo, decentralized internet si Web3. Why? Because of this. Cryptocurrency is decentralized. What does decentralized mean? Walang central authority na nag-govern nito. Walang central authority na naghahawak nito. So, baliktad to sa, for example, mga banko. Sa banko, centralized siya. Kasi ba? Diba, pag may nagbibigay ka, o oh, sige, magdadeposit ako ng pera ngayon. Pag deposit mo ng pera, essentially, mahawak yung banko sa pera mo. ba? Diba? So, may central authority na naghahawak. So, for example, mababankrupt yung banko, sana hindi naman. Pero, alam mo yun, kung mababankrupt yung banko, eh, sila may hawak ng pera mo eh. So, mawawala din yung pera mo. Ganon. Ito baliktad. So, kahit kahit man may, ano, ka, kasi ikaw may hawak mismo nung, nung pera mo, mean, decentralized siya in that sense din. Ayan. So, moving forward, din yun yung concept ng cryptocurrency ah. Sorry. Pwede kayong uminom ng tubig kung masyadong sumobra din sa so pag-explain in that point. Pero, ayan, balik muna tayo. So, going back, di ba? Sinabi ko, uh, uh, through digital ownership, na-cover na natin yon Cryptocurrency, na-cover na natin yon Now, let's move on to the more, I'd say a bit more complicated. Sa blockchain naman tayo. So, ano nga ba yung blockchain, right? Again, um, let me just check on check up, right? Uh, kung ano ba yung pagkakaintindi sa blockchain. Or yung ano yung guess nyo sa blockchain. Uh, again, chat nyo na lang uh, from there. So, first, A, it's a chain of blocks. B, it's a digital ledger. And C, it's a system that enables cryptocurrency. Ayan. So, asagot. Ayan. <laughs> Parang ano nyo na, all of the above. <laughs> Ayan. Sige. Okay. Interesting. Okay, so ano nga ba yung blockchain? Ayan. Actually, mainly, ano nga yung blockchain is, it's actually B, a digital ledger. But of course, may influence siya from A and C. And I'll discuss that a bit later on. C, blockchain, if you think about it, is a digital ledger that stores and ties transactions happening in a cryptocurrency network. Digital ledger. Ano nga bang example ng digital ledger, right? Uh, or ledger, ledger talaga in general. So, any financial costing, cost statement, ganun. Kung may in or may out yan, may debit, credit, ayan, ganun yung idea ng ledger, di ba? Na, na, na lilista niya lahat ng different transactions na nangyayari. Now, even ang ledger kahit ano yan, hindi yan kailangan na parang notebook talagang ledger na ganun. Kahit sabihin mo napkin lang, nasusulatan mo, okay, transaction, and dito, ito yung, O oh, eto, si ano si Marites, may utang na ganito, 500. Tapos, uh, binayaran niya, binayaran ni Marites ng Thursday, ayan, ng Biernes, ganun, for example. O, oh, edi, minus 250, ganun. Technically, ano pa niyan? Record of transaction pa niyan. So, technically, ledger pa niyan. So, ganun yung idea ni blockchain. Actually, digital ledger siya. So, online siya, nagsustore siya ng lahat ng iba't ibang transactions na nangyayari in a cryptocurrency network. So like I mentioned yung cryptocurrency kanina, di ba? Cryptocurrency, any form of token or any uh, any form of uh, monetary system na online, na, na secured by a network, sinusulat ni, na, ni, ng 
uh, blockchain yon under their own ledger, right? So, nang nakikita natin sa, sa blockchain. Ayan. So, essentially, if you think about it, para siyang ganito. Ayan. Para siyang different uh, transactions. Ayan. Ay, well, different siyang notes. So, per line dyan, maraming different um, mga transactions na nangyari. O para si Marites, nagsulat ng ganito. Nagsend siya ng, nagbigay siya ng 500. Tapos, ito, parang nag-transfer si, ano, si... Jonathan, ng ganito karaming pera, ganun-ganon. So, nasusulat siya. And within those transactions, yung idea, within those, uh, within those, ano, uh, within those um, inputs, nagkakaroon ng transaction. So, it's a steady row of transactions between different items. Yan. And all of these lines, right, um, they become a collection of different transactions that are happening and clustered together. So, if narinig nyo na before, baka narinig nyo mga nodes, ayan, yung mga nodes, this is a simpler form of that, right? Um, and it, essentially, it builds up different transactions na nagiging what we call now as a blockchain. So, si blockchain, napakaraming different transactions yan nangyayari. Um, and it's a very interesting form si blockchain. So hindi siya yung normal, hindi siya yung normal ha, na nakikita niyo yung parang sa, sa banko, bank account niyo na may nakalagay lang na parang okay, eto may may bayad si ganito, ganyan ganyan. Actually, it's a bit more complicated than that kasi nga secured siya. And here is how it works. Ayan. Ah, uh, eto pala, sample lang. So for example, nakalagay lang dito. So kuno si Mark, nakalagay sa isang transaction dito si Mark nagsasensya ng 2 Bitcoin kay Casty, tapos dito, kay Ann naman, nagsasensya ng 5 Bitcoin kay Riley. At yung sinasabi ko kanina, na may transactions na nangyayari. And ang very interesting part about the blockchain is, uh, hindi siya hackable, right? Hindi siya nade-destroy kahit anong part na, ah, well, kung ma-destroy man siya or kung ma-hack man siya, hindi apektado yung ibang parts ng mga transactions na nangyayari. So essentially, hindi kasi siya pa, eh, well, para siyang literal na physical chain na for example, um para siyang hindi siya nag well, hindi siya nag, nag uh, get up. So for example, ang chain, may may chain ka, 'di ba, na na parang physical chain. Ngayon, pag na destroy yung isang link niya, 'di ba, magaganan siya, mas masisira siya essentially. So, pag hindi siya magiging sturdy, malala ma ma aano din yung the rest of the chains. Malalaman ngayon na okay, yan, ano yan, compromised yan siya na na chain, right? May nag-hack sa kanya, may nag-tamper sa kanya, and in a sense, madali siya i-track. So madali madali siya maintindihan kung ano nga ba yung kung may issues nga ba. So hindi siya natatago from the majority. And this is where the transparency of the blockchain comes into play. Kaya nga siya nagiging choice ng mga cryptocurrencies or ng mga um, Web3 natives ngayon is kasi may sense of transparency siya na hindi tulad ng mga banko, for example, pag may mali, pwedeng makover up, di ba? Pwedeng madali yung error, uh, which in a sense, nagiging mas mahirap tsaka mas natatago sa mga tao. Ngayon, yung blockchain actually, very interesting siya. Ito yung sinasabi ko. Kasi hindi lang siya yung normal na parang transaction, ganun, ganun. Kasi, if isipin nyo, kung kunwari uh, transac- building of transactions na siya, edi sino nagsusulat, di ba? Sino nag- nagtatay ng different transactions together? Ngayon, interesting yung sa, ano, sa um, blockchain or sa Web3. Kasi hindi lang siya na isang gobyerno, for example, or isang banko ang nagsusulat nun. Actually, this is composed of different set of miners across the world, actually. So, napakaraming miners na nag, nag-involve in, into writing those different transactions down. At baka pos- possible, narinig din na yung miners before, um, pero gusto kong isimplify kung ano yung pagkakaintindi ng pagiging miner, ah, diba? Tsaka ano yung nangyayari sa pag uh, pagtay ng transactions in a blockchain with miners. So let's get in a little deeper. So for example, ito, example na naman tayo. Example, si Pedro, yung kanina, di ba? Si Pedro, 
gusto niya mag-send ng, sabihin mo, ng parang five Bitcoin kay Darna. ba? Diba? Yaman siya eh. Mayaman siya eh. Gusto niya magbigay ng five Bitcoin kay Darna. Ano bang nangyayari? ba? Diba? Paano ba niya nasasend yun? Hindi yun simpleng parang, okay, bigay ko lang sa'yo, i-gcash ko lang sa'yo, or i-send ko lang bank, bank transfer ko lang sa'yo. Ang nangyayari sa blockchain, pag ganun, is actually, may shuffling na nangyayari. So, for example, eto sila, lahat sila nandito sa sa isang uh, table, right? Si Pedro, si Ryan, si Jerome, si Darna, si Julia. Ngayon si Pedro, gusto niya mag-receive, uh, mag-send kay Darna. Sa mga miners natin, eto yung mga different miners, hindi pwedeng si Pedro or si Darna yung mag- Uh, ano, mag-receive. So, mag-roll ng dice to. For example, na-receive or mag... Ito, parang may, may lottery kasi na nangyayari. So, yung lottery, pinili si Julia. Okay, si Julia daw yung required na mag-verify ng transaction or mag-write daw ng transaction into the blockchain. So, si Julia, okay, ano niya, okay na, na, may, na verify siya, check niya if valid nga yung transaction. If meron ngang 5 Bitcoin talaga si Pedro, Tsaka if makaka-receive nga talaga ng 5 Bitcoin, si Darna. Ayan, so siya ko verify Ngayon, pag na-verify na niya, everyone has to approve as well. Right? Pag na-approve na ng buong uh, grupo to, doon, pa pwede nang magbigay si Pedro kay Darna ng no 5 Bitcoin na sinabi nga dyan. Now, as as they go, and, and habang nangyayari yung process na yun, actually, nagsusulat sila. Sorry, ayan, nagsusulat sila sa kanilang notebook, kasi may notebook yan, yun yung transactions na nangyayari. Um, and then, um, pagka nasulat na yun, dun may receive ni Darna yung whole um, Bitcoin na mabibigay. Ngayon, tanong is, paano kung sabi nga ni, ni Julia na, ay, hindi naman, like, uh, hindi siya mag-verify, ayoko mag-verify, or ano, kasi, uh, parang mahirap mag-verify, ganon. So, ang mangyayari, magkakaroon lang ulit ng Raffle. So, uulit na naman, baka si Jerome, baka si Ryan, yung mag, ah, ano, mag-verify until the whole process goes and may receive na niya, ba? Diba? So, of course, blockchain is something like this. Essentially, different miners do the whole transaction um, and write it down, right? They do the lottery, they do the, the transaction. Um, and dito na, na dito na sa send and na receive yung mga different cryptocurrencies. And very interesting to kasi for miners and miners at least at this point is in the form of different supercomputers. At dahil ba yun? Kasi yung miners actually, hindi lang simpleng parang sinusulat ng nila o oh, si Cam, si Marites nag-send ng 500 ganun. They actually have to go and process uh, a lot of different mathematical equations in order to arrive at that at very fast speed. Ayan. Kaya nga, very um, very dense din yung blockchain at ang daming different transactions na nangyayari day by day um, that goes through uh, with this. Ayan. So, ang daming mga validations and this happens on a worldwide scale, right? Um, that essentially, it adds and adds to the blockchain uh, once everyone approves of it. Ayan. So, of course, this whole space, as more and more people subscribe into it, it evolves and evolves. Um, and that's something that is very important to take note of. Kasi nga, parang the more that people join, right, mas nagiging, ex- parang mas nagiging uh, um, fight yung assist. Imagine nyo lang, kunwari, ang daming nagbabayad sa kay Chikash, di ba, at one point. So, nagiging very traffic siya. And that's why a lot of different other blockchains are being introduced. And marami na actually at this point, marami ng different blockchains. Hindi lang Bitcoin, uh, maraming different protocols as well that are being involved in the whole process. Kaya mas malaki na si Web3 at this point. So essentially, si Web3, it's a cluster of these three items. So underneath si Web2, si Web3, kailangan mo talaga ng internet para maka-join dun sa whole transaction process, di ba? And underneath and within it, so si internet nandito, tapos may layer of blockchain, yun yung nakikita natin yung different ledgers, and then yung application natin, yung cryptocurrency, is on top. So para siyang burger, kung, kung sasabihin mo, di ba? And as you wrap all of this together, andun yung nakikita natin yung web3. And that's 
how it employs the, dig- the true digital ownership na nakikita natin ngayon. So again, let's go back to this. Web3 is the iteration of the internet that enables true digital ownership using cryptocurrencies and blockchain technology. Right? Mas nagets niyo na ba? Mas, medyo mas nagets na ba? Or mas naging complicated yung whole concept ni Web3? Ayan. Hopefully, uh, medyo mas nagets na. Pero, i-cover natin the different properties ni Web3, right? Yung first is decentralized. At babalik ko to kasi parang medyo tinatch ko lang siya na topic kanina. So, Web3 is decentralized. So there's no controlling party or entity and it's also opposite to the the systems we use today. Now like I mentioned, diba, yung uh yung sinabi ko sa, sa inyo kanina. For example, mga banko or uh mga organizations or governments, diba? Essentially, may nagpo-flow inward. So eto tayo, for example, at yung mga different consumers, tapos may center na nagko-control for example, nung money natin, it doesn't have to be money. So, for example, centralized siya if uh, an art museum receives all the different arts in that area. Diba? The centralized pa yun. Um, or, or centralized siya if, for example, uh, majority ng people pumupunta, right? So, may control yung first, yung uh, city na yon over the people. Ganon. Ganon yung idea. The centralized siya. Uh, sorry, centralized siya. Now, it's the opposite to that. The centralized right it becomes now lahat tayo are each individual pieces to the to the whole ecosystem tayo lahat we can control our own money for example we can un- control our own privacy is also one part right kasi diba sa social media ngayon parang centralized pa siya kasi for example inaallow mo si facebook to receive your birthday information ganun Diba? So, imagine si Facebook, nakukuha niya lahat ng different birthdays. Lahat ng birthdays ng lahat ng different people na sa kanya. Kaya nga nakaka-greet siya ng happy birthday sa inyo, sa inyong birthday. Diba? Ayan. So, baliktad siya. Si Decentralized, you can keep that information to yourself. Pwede no one can know about your birthday, right? Because you have that sense of ownership. Uh, because nga, Decentralized siya. Okay. And then, permissionless siya. Permissionless, what does that mean? So for example, maglo-log in ka, right? Uh, maglo-log in ka sa Facebook. Tapos ay pag sign up ka sa Facebook. Tapos 'di ba si si Facebook required na ilagay mo kung ano yung ano mo, ano yung kung saan ka nang galing for example, uh, or kung ano ba yung birthday mo or kung ano yung gusto mong username, ganun. A lot of different uh, permissions are being asked from your picture mo, ganun hinihingi. Essentially, uh, may permission yon with permission. Uh, so, uh, they they get to receive the data for you. Uh, tapos yun, you permit them to process the data. Pwede nilang gamitin across different parts of their social media channel. Ngayon, si blockchain, or si, sorry, si Web3, uh, may property siya na permissionless siya. So, you don't actually need to get permission to access this economy or this Web3 technology. Kahit mapaano ka man, Pinoy, English, di ba? Japanese, German, Taiwanese, whatever, right? Kahit anong age mo, kahit anong uh, gender and whatsoever, hindi ka barred from participating into the web fee. Unlike some companies or some uh, areas in, in the current web to internet, na kailangan mo may certain age bracket ka or may certain um, country ka na nanggagaling to para lang participate ka sa kanila. Ayan. And then, so aside from that, property three, native payments, right? So one thing na very particular sa Web3 is that uh, it can be sent to another person or payments can be done across uh, from one person to the other without any middleman. Or any transaction to, hindi to to pwede pera. Like na, I mentioned kanina, di ba? So, for example, si TikTok, wala na siya. Kasi siya yung middleman. Imagine if si Glenn, tapos yung audience niya, diretso na, nakaka-transact with each other. So, they give their, ano, for example, they give their support diretso kay Glenn. Glenn can provide any content or any merch and whatnot diretso to them. 
So there doesn't need to be any middleman in that process. Um, this is very particular in, in finance kasi syempre, sa financial models natin of this uh, whole, um, this current uh, ecosystem, diba? a lot are being controlled by middlemen. Not even just one. Minsan, maraming different yun. Kunwari sa, sa ano, real estate, diba? Kunwari sa real estate, um, napakaraming mga tao na ay, napaka, napakaraming involved parties. So, meron tayong broker, may sales agent, baka may another sales agent. Tapos meron pang commission yung isang ano natin, yung uh, yung nag-introduce pa sa atin na relative, ganun. So, imagine if we can uh, omit that uh, middleman into the whole process. Yun yung ino offer ni Web3 na capability through its technology. Now, uh, I just want to go over some few use cases. At don't worry, medyo malapit na tayo matapos dito, right? Uh, just some case studies at on how or where we can see Web3, diba? I don't know if you guys know of this browser. Let me know in the comments kung na, may nakadownload na ba ng browser na ito. But this is called the Brave Browser. Actually, gamit, gamit ko din siya um, na browser. So, essentially, yung si Brave Browser, alam niyo pag, kunwari, nag-Google Chrome kayo or nag-other browsers kayo, di ba minsan, nakaka-receive kayo ng mga ads, ayan, tapos, um, may mga trackers dyan, may mga cookies na nalalagay mo. Alam niyo ba, na in fact, even just, kahit libre lang, di ba, pag accept niyo niyan, technically, they can make, or nakaka-kumikita na sila niyan, pwede na silang kumita niyan. Kasi nga, they already have access to your data. Tapos yung mga advertising agencies, for example, binabayaran nila si Google Chrome or si, ano bang meron dyan? Si Internet Explorer, for example, na ma-receive or ma, 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 ma roll out yung different ads. At dun sila kumikita. Kahit man, ang feeling mo, eh, hindi naman ako nagbayad kay Google Chrome or uh, hindi ko naman napansin na ganun. So they're, they're making a profit out of your data. Ngayon si Brave Browser, ano ba ginagawa niya? May option siya actually na pwede mong i-block lahat ng ads na nag-roll out niya. Tapos pwede din i ano mo sa kanya na wag mo ah, wag mo ako i-track, like wag mo kunan ng data anywhere that I go. Pwede ganon si Brave. Now very interesting at yung mas interesting na part. Okay, may mga ganun naman eh, may mga um may mga uh vi- antivirus na nagbo-block ng ads. Sure, okay. Very interesting kay Brave Browser and why it's called uh, predecessor to the Web3, right? Kasi si Brave Browser, pwede mo siyang sabihan na, okay, pwede mo actually akong i-track. Pwede mo kay track Or pwede kang mag-show ng ads sa akin. Pwede kang mag-show ng limited ads or pwede kang mag-show ng maraming ads. Pero, babayaran mo ako that I offer this. Diba? So, nangyari sa Brave, pag inalaw mo na tinatrack ka or pag inalaw mo na nakaka-receive ka ng ads, nakaka-receive ka actually ng token nila, ng cryptocurrency token nila. At in that way, right, na nare-reward ka as a person na nagbibigay ng data mo sa, sa ibang tao or sa, in this sense, sa corporation nila. Di ba? So, ganun yung idea ni Web3. Inaalaw niya yung pag-transact, right, or pag, pag, um, pag-bigay ng ownership dun sa mga users nila by being by using their cryptocurrency um without the need for a middleman technically kasi nga diretso na yung token uh in that sense of course kaya nga siya sinasabing parang predecessor pa kasi meron pa rin siya centralized pa rin siya diba meron pa rin yung nagmamayari sa Brave browser na kumikita pa rin of course but in this sense you are also rewarded kahit man hindi ka sikat kahit man uh, simpleng tao ka lang diba may reward system na siya because of the fact that you gave your data away. Now, also interesting, si Brave Browser, mayroon din siyang part na online tipping. So, pwede ka actually mag-tip sa mga creators mo. Bigyan mo, oh, bigyan ko ng 20 pesos yung favorite kong YouTuber kasi nga, uh, ano, kasi nga, na tutuwa ako sa kanya, ganun. And then, all of the revenue from there goes directly to the creator. Instead of it na malaki yung commission na nakukuha ni, ng, ng isang social media, from the creator itself. So, ganun. Ganun yung parang concept ni Web3 uh, in the form na hindi lang sa pera or sa financial or monetary system. This could also be seen in ways like this, like the Brave Browser. 
Now, another interesting take or another interesting case study is si Metamask. Now, ano nga ba si Metamask? Essentially, si Metamask, para siyang wallet, right? Wallet siya, pwede mong lagay. So, imagine mo parang uh, different, parang normal wallet or bank account mo, ganun. Pwede mo nalalagay yung different cryptocurrencies mo. Pero, ang interesting kay Metamask is it actually goes and covers a lot of different blockchains or different networks, kumbaga, na nakoconnect. So, multi-chain siya, essentially. Pwede mong store dito yung cryptocurrency mo, right? And um, you're able to to keep it to yourself. Uh, and even more, may mga, this is called the hot wallet, eh. Hot wallet being na connected siya sa internet. May mga cold wallet din na hindi talaga connected sa internet na talagang, bali, hindi, hindi walang makaka-access. No one else can access except for yourself. For as long as you have the password to your own wallet. Now, it's interesting kasi na, dito natin nakikita yung permissionless. Si Metamask, hindi mo kailangan na state whole name mo, ano yung gender mo, ano yung background mo, anong citizenship ka, whatever, so on and so forth. Kasi nga permissionless siya. And you only need to access it either through your seed phrase or your own access key. Ayan. Nandun yun na nakikita natin. Pero next time na natin pag-usapan yung mga public keys, private keys. Um, which makes a lot it a lot simpler, actually. Kahit sa simula, akalain mo na parang, parang mas complicated siya. Actually, mas napapasimplify siya kasi hindi mo na kailangan to go through all that KYC, yung know your customer na processes. Dahil nga, sa web view. Ayan. So, actually, doon na nagtatapos yung... Uh, very brief na basics natin about Web3. Hopefully, natutunan, may natutunan naman kayo uh, sa ating discussion ngayon. Pero may isa lang request. So, request ko lang po is learn something new about Web3 this week and try to initiate a conversation with someone about it. Ang goal ko sa inyo is you have to be able to explain it like you're talking to someone na uh, 5 years old or 10 years old. Kung may anak man kayo, sana po'y Ma, ma-explain nyo, di ba? Nang ganong simple form. Um, and in, a, in that way, you're able to digest Web3. Mas lalo mo naiintindihan yung Web3. Mas lalo mo naiintindihan yung technology behind it. At mas nagiging simple siya. Mas hindi natatakot for you. Yung mismong Web3. Kasi naiintindihan ko yung Web3 na concept. Ang dami na nating nakitang mga potential scams dyan. Mga... Nagiging issue, di ba? Parang pag narinig mo yun, natatakot tayo agad. Pero gusto ko na, kagaya ng pag-introduce natin ng internet, ng web 2, ng Facebook, ng Instagram, ng, ng kahit anumang platform dyan, sana ma, ma-introduce din natin ng web 2 in a very simpler way uh, as we grow and adopt to it. Ayan. So, that ends my talk. Salamat po sa pakikinig. At ayun po, ako po ay galing sa Bitskwela. So, Kung gusto nyo man matutunan more about Bitskwela, yung natuturo ko ngayon is very top level lang po yun. Yung, uh, yung nasa first number one, yung basic lang namin na topics. Pero kung gusto nyo pong matuto about NFTs, about um, wallets, ayon about different protocols, nandyan lang po yan. At uh, actually, pwede nyo nang e-search www.bitskwela.com. Ayan. At nandun po lahat ng content namin. Uh, at ayun, thank you po sa pakikinig. Ayan, baka may mga tanong po ba kayo? Ayan, thank you so much, Ms. Camille. Um, open na po ang ating floor for the question. Yes. Pero ayan, parang ayan. madami na... Since maraming nagpapasalamat kay ma'am, natatabunan ng ating mga question. So, magbasa na lang po. Thank you po. Salamat po sa ano nyo. Ayan. Sige. Magbabasa na lang po ako dito. Okay. Uh, balikan ko lang ng Ito, on. Ito ma'am, meron po akong isang question na nakuha from Ace Lim. So, question po. Online scams are rather product of social engineering or manipulation, not hacking whatsoever. With cryptocurrency being decentralized, who do we go if we become victims of scams? I work under the fraud department of 
a bank. I've handled different cases as such. And bank denies any responsibility on such cases knowing that authorizations were provided. Yeah, thank you, Ace. Uh, hello, Ace. Ayan, wag hi ka naman dyan. Kung na dyan ka, thank you po sa question mo. And actually, very, very good question yan. Um, and siguro simplify natin, di ba, yung sinabi mo sa simula. Online scams are rather a product of social engineering or manipulation, not hacking whatsoever. What does that mean? Um, actually, a lot of the issues na, or yung mga scams nga na nangyayari sa ating space ngayon sa Web3 or sa Sabi mo sa Bitcoin, sa crypto, sa Ethereum, sa different cryptocurrencies, ay hindi dahil hinahack sila. Kasi nga sinabi natin, 'di ba? Na, na ano natin yung concept na ang just alone, stand alone ang blockchain, secure nga siya. Kasi nga may transparency, right? At may uh, at secured siya with crypto, cryptography. Ngayon, ang scams or ang nagiging problema dito sa block sa whole concept of Web3 is maraming mga hindi nakakagets ng Web3 or ng whole concept ng blockchain na talagang na lulure sila into it. Either na fish sila, phishing as in na parang may ano fraudulent actors or may mga masamang tao na nag, naglalagay ng mga fake links tapos napapasulat yung mga details ng mga tao, ganun. Or uh, naman manipulate sila parang sinasabi na uy, ito may may ano, may uh, results dito parang makaka 200 times ka ng pera mo in in one one week, ganun. So, dahil nga tapos na sabihin lang, oh, ito invest ka lang sa Bitcoin, ganun. Uh, ako nang bahala, ganun. So, yun yung mga social engineering or manipulation na nang, nangyayari, 'di ba? And I totally agree with that. Karamihan actually ng mga problema natin or problema ng Web3 or mga scams na nangyari is because of that. And mainly because hindi nila kabisado kung ano yon. And now, the question here, right, is saan ba tayo tatakbo kung may mga biktima do- dito? Because of the fact that the centralized si Web3 at walang tao na walang direct na parang sasabihin mo, uy, ikaw yung may kasalanan, bakit ako na ano? O ba? Parang hindi ka pwedeng mag... mag humingi ng insurance kumbaga kasi nga hindi din regular hindi pa gaano regulated si web3 ba or si cryptocurrency yun yung naging challenge and i agree with you it is still currently a challenge that we have but i think yung root talaga nito is to in, in order to be able to educate yung people mas maintindihan nila yung technology mas maintindihan nila, nila how it works and mas ma-prevent masasabi na uy clear naman na scam yan or fake naman yan or alam ko naman kung anong paano gumagana tong hot wallet or paano paano gumagana tong cold wallet di ba or or pa, pa, paano nagto-transfer etong blockchain na to particular blockchain na to or uh, for example itong network na to itong uh, polygon network itong ethereum network itong uh, uh, bitcoin network may intindihan na nila ang pagkakaiba and they will be able to decide for themselves so all in all i think yung talagang nagiging uh, kailangan natin na action nandito is yung preventive action. How do we avoid na manipulate sila in the first place? Right? Because at the end of the day, yun pa yung nagiging challenge. Kasi, because with the with the sense of decentralization, yun nga, wala din tayong matatakbuhan para to blame na na manipulate tayo or na socially engineer tayo to be able to send it to another person. And that's the reality. Marami talagang mga scammers sa mundo. Ang tanong lang is, are we equipped enough to be able to uh, know pag nandiyan nga yung scammers, pag nandiyan yung bad actors? But thank you, Ace. Uh, let me know if you have any additional questions. Uh, and patuloy niyo po yung tamang trabaho niyo on, the, on being able to detect frauds and what. Okay, ayan. <laughs> thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you. So, I hope na sagot ni ma'am yung tanong niyo po. Mm-hmm. And other other questions pa? Say again. Um, p- kaya naman po pipili Miss Rachel sa, ano, sa next. Yes ma'am, kung may nababasa din po kayo, uh, feel free to read na lang din po kasi medyo natabunan nga po. Ah, uh, sige. May tanong dito si Just Dado po has po. Hello po, uh, Sir Just Dado. 
Um, magandang hapon po. So, ang question is, what do you think are the potential negative impacts of reg government regulations on cryptocurrencies in Web3? Um, so, disclaimer lang muna, ang stance ko po is actually gusto ko pong ma-regulate yung cryptocurrencies. Um, so, mas, actually, mas gusto ko siyang introduce tsaka ma-accept, ma di ba, ng, ng government. Kasi what does that mean? Ah, sige. But tas, pupuntahan po natin kung ano po yung negative impacts. Kung yung positive and negative impacts. So, positively, if iisipin mo, pag-regulated yung cryptocurrency, technically, tax na siya. So, babayad ka na ng tax, di ba? Uh, Siyempre, uh, ano din yun? Uh, gastos ka, technically, sa yung part. Kasi nga, every transaction you make, uh, magiging taxable na siya. So, medyo negative impact yun being ikaw na gumagamit ng cryptocurrency. Ayan. Pero ano ba yung nagiging good good na result, di ba? Pag nag-regulate siya. First, of course, may mas natatrack natin sa ating own na uh, country kung ano ba yung galaw ng cryptocurrency. So, hindi na siya tinatago-tago lang. Kaya na mas na-avoid tuloy natin yung mga mon money laundering or nagkakaroon tayo ng loss. L loss, as in, mga um ordinances ganon na nagpe-prevent for us or nag-sanction ng mga uh, bad na activities na ganon um and by being able to do so right nagiging mas uh, reliable yung whole money system ng uh, different cryptocurrencies in web3 at the same time being able for it to be regulated allows us to actually pay with cryptocurrency sa mga bagay-bagay sa mga different shops. So, think of it na yung cryptocurrency talagang hindi na siya as a stock na item, but actually something that you can transact with another person. So, bibili ako ng Coke doon sa isang store. Uh, if it's regulated, the more that uh, um, stores are willing to use it as an actual medium to pay for things or to receive as payment for things. Ayan. Clear ba? Sorry. Ayan. Uh, Ayan. So, uh, any other questions? Kung, Mr. Chal, kung may, pipili, may mapipili ka din po. Sige uh, ma. So, si Mayrick nagtanong, is transacting with crypto really safe? Um, again, like I mentioned, diba? And like, yung sinabi nga din ni Sir Ace, um, talagang, safe yung technology kasi nga sa sinabi ko di ba technically may whole process siya of validation uh, from one person and then lahat sa kanilang miners dapat mo validate din and at the same time hindi siya kuno control ng any centralized body so technically pag ma bankrupt uh, walang walang matatanggal yung whole concept na may ma bankrupt kasi nga it's playing under that whole network of various millions of of uh, miners working together Ang nagiging problem lang is pag nasa social engineer siya or na manipulate So yung mga taong parang, ay, ito, uh, good value or uh, malaking ano to, ROI to or return of investment mo pag nagbayad ka ng sa Bitcoin, stuff like that. Kaya siya nagkakaroon ng bad na not connotation sa kanyang, uh, sa crypto. Ayan. Okay. Ah... Uh... May questions pa ba? Kung may hindi pa pala ako na uh, ano na question na gusto niyo i ano, paki send na lang po ulit para. Thank you po Sir Merrick. Ayan. Yes po. Yes at natabunan na nga ang mga questions natin. Yes. How sure uh ano yun? How sure we are na safe pa kaya ang personal data namin if registered na ang SIM card namin since it will be required na daw po. Uh, great question uh Desiree. I'm not sure kung miss mister kasi pa <laughs> uh, but hello Desri. Uh that's a good question no. Um and essentially that's the same idea. Yung sinasabi ko sa inyo na yun nga may may permission less siya, ba? Uh so si web as uh, si SIM card registration of course nasa web 2 side pa rin yan. Uh yun yung sinasabi kong parang may ownership sila ng data mo, ng personal data mo. Uh na sila nakaka-control nung personal any personal data. So yung opposite noon web3 uh yung yung goal ni web3 is 
na ikaw magko-control ng own data mo. Ikaw lang maka-keep ng own uh, data mo. Kung maging SIM card man yan. Or, and actually, interestingly, may mga web three projects na din dito ngayon na talagang yun yung goal, right? Um, in, um, ma-allow niya na ma-encrypt yung, yung uh, data, personal data within that Um, within that space. Ayan. Naniniwala ka po ba, ma'am, kapag ang government ini-implied ang blockchain technology when it comes to voting system, may maaring maiwasan na yung vote buying? Actually, interesting. Uh, salamat po, uh, Rene. Ayan. Hi, Rene po. Um, so actually, interesting kasi Actually, ako personally, hindi ko alam kung ano yung... Depende kasi yan kung what government, di ba? Kung ano yung whole process uh, and kung ano yung magiging actual application nung, nung voting system. But interestingly, may mga ilang studies na rin na nag-e-employ nun uh, at kung ano, ano nga ba yung magiging mangyayari pag may vote, uh, kung malalagay sa blockchain yung voting system. And I'd say, oh, feel ko mas masisecure siya. Kasi nga yung voting system natin by be, by placing it into the blockchain, 'di ba? Na encrypt siya. So ikaw lang din yung mga direct Tapos kung may any uh, sort of anomalies man mangyayari, yung buong chain na yon or buong transaction na yon, madadown siya. Yun yung sinasabi kong parang chain siya na nangyayari na hindi na siya technically uh, kung ma-hack man siya or ma masisira man siya in the whole process, yung buong transaction yung yung madadown. Meaning na mas makikita natin agad or mas transparent siya sa atin. Um, but of course, al- madaming different layers yan. Um, and that's really interesting. Kung ma- mas search mo yan online, maraming mga mga references na pwede mong tingnan about that. But thank you, Renek. Mabuti naman at nakikita mo din yung mga balitang ganun, ano, na hindi lang actually sa financial side nakikita yung blockchain, but even on this aspects, pwede ding i-apply yung blockchain. Yes, sana. At actually, pumahita mo naman, pinag-aaralan talaga ng mga gobyerno yun ngayon. Kaya very exciting time din to sa atin. Kasi nga, kung hindi ka man fan ng mga Bitcoin, hindi ka fan ng mga cryptocurrency, maganda pa rin na maintindihan mo yung Web3 kasi nga marami siyang different applications. Like yung sinasabi ko sa inyo kanina, ba? Diba, na pwede siya sa content creation, kung blogger ka, pwede ma- ma-apply yun. Pwede siya sa mga gobyerno. Pwede siya sa hospitals. Oo. Pwede din siya sa church. Ang daming different applications ng blockchain. Basta maintindihan mo lang yung whole concept of it. Ayan. So, medyo uh, more on the government ng ating mga tanong, ha? <laughs> uh, sige. I think may um, mga tanong pa dito. Um, yung how to are pay to earn games offering crypto is marketing strategy or clickbait only? In your point of view, is it really a source of income or just a simple waste of time? As consumers, should we really play games like this in a sense that we like to earn? So, uh, hi, and Henry. Ayan. So, siguro ito, nung mas narinig niyo mga Axie Infinity, di ba? Actually, yun yung mga pay to earn games. So, yun yung uh, umbrella term nung mga larong tulad ng ganon. Bakit siya tinatawag play to earn? Uh, play to earn kasi pag lalaro ka, makaka- kumikita ka. Ngayon yung idea. So, actually, hindi naman siya just a marketing strategy or clickbait. Technically, yung mga play to earn games, talagang may logic siya behind it. May tokenomics, kumbaga. Tokenomics meaning economics ng token nila. Uh, and may whole concept siya kung pa- paano mara-receive, paano sila, uh, paano... kumikita, paano nila mabibigay balik sa sa naglalaro, ganun. Maraming mga ganun, different ones. Kaya lang siguro siya nagiging, ano, nagiging concern, kasi diba, na, na, na down din yung aksi. Kasi nga, may, may ilang, ano, kompanya na yung tokenomics nila, hindi siya sustainable. So, kung dadami, kung magsascale yung number of users, hindi na nila makakontrol or hindi na siya as applicable dun sa kanyang, sa uh, magiging parang whole idea or whole Uh, flow nung pera. Kumbaga. Now, is it really a source of income or simply just a waste of time? It's a source of income if you really, I mean, if you're 
same lang siya, siguro kung sasabihin mo susugal ka, di ba? Or kung, hindi naman susugal, pero kung kunwari, uh, gagawa ka ng isang trabaho, di ba? Same lang siya, you put labor into it, yun yung hinihingi nila, in return, uh, they reward you for it. So, depende din talaga siya sa so, kung anong lalaruin mo, right? Pero I'd suggest, kasi nga, very young pa yung industry ngayon, uh, di ba? Parang, talagang dapat, maingat ka, tsaka na-research mo. Kaya may mga white paper ang tawag, which is parang mga, kung isipin mo parang user manual siya kung papaano naggumagani yung mga tokenomics, kung ano, papa, papa, ano ka, uh, papaano gumagani yung mismo yung token nila. Para naman mas maintindihan mo, paano ka ba kita dito? Or ano ba yung risks involved, di ba? Or ano ba yung mga magiging problema along the way if ever uh, tutuloy ka nga as a, as a part of income dito? I'd say, oo, pwede naman siyang pagkakitaan, pero at the same time, kailangan understand mo kung anong yung legalities, kumbaga, of uh, being involved in those. Para naman, walang talo sa dulo. Ayan. <laughs> okay. Oo. Yes. So, um, hopefully, na-explain ni ma'am, pero on my side, na-explain naman ni ma'am yung mga Uh, sagot dun sa mga questions natin, no? So, mm-hmm. lahat naman siguro ng um, mga ginagawa natin is need natin talagang aralin para hindi hindi tayo magkamali sa mga decisions natin, no? So, yeah. lahat naman is um, kailangan natin, bago tayo pumasok sa isang mga transactions, kumbaga is aralin natin talaga kung um, legit ba siya or hindi. Yeah. So, para at the end of the day, hindi tayo maloko or ma-scam or kung ano man yung pos- posibleng mangyari dun sa gagawin nating transactions. Correct. Ayan. Ayan. I think may nagtanong lang din dito si Sir Romel ata kung may upcoming trainings barrel for web development. Meron po ba na si Richard? Ayan. So for our trainings naman po is monthly, nagpo-post kami ng calendar of activities for uh the month so please do like and follow na lang po yung page na DICT region 4A and also yung mga provincial um DICT pages namin yung sa buong Calabar zone po doon po kami nagpo-post usually ng mga training po and mm-hmm. webinar so yon just check na lang po yung ating Facebook page po mm-hmm. Ayan, Chahan, Ms. Rachel po Uh, if every man no, may gusto ding matuto about particularly low-code development or no-code development, yung tipong hindi ka na magko-code, hindi ka na magta-type, uh, talagang ano na lang, drag and drop, and yung mga ganon, uh, I can definitely share my uh, knowledge din siguro doon. Maybe next, uh, sa susunod din naman po na mga... Ayan. <laughs> sure, ma'am. Uh, willing na willing kami yan, i-accept yung offer niyo at Yeah. Be first person ulit. So, gusto nyo ba uh, yun, guys? <laughs> yan. Yeah. Schedule na lang natin ulit. Oo, uh, uh, correct. And yun nga, may nagsasabi dito, parang yung mga Shopify. Oh, kasama na po yan. Shopify, Webflow. Uh, o, oh, pwede din yung WordPress, mga ganon. Uh, talagang pwede ko pong ma- ma-introduce yun. At tsaka paano kayo, paano nyo pagkakakitaan yun, di ba? Uh, on a freelance side, lalo na. Kasi marami talagang mga, hindi lang sa mga Pinoy, maraming mga international din na naghahanap ng talents dito sa Pilipinas uh, para dyan. Kasi napaka-importante din naman talaga na magkaroon ng web presence, di ba? Uh, sa pamamagitan ng website. So, pag-introduce nun, pwede. Oh, systems development, pwede din po. App development, uh, that's something I can also uh, introduce. Pero pag-usapan natin sa susunod yan. <laughs> uh, yes, ma'am. Ang dami, ang dami pwed- pwedeng i-offer ni ma'am. So, ma'am, may question lang po dito ang isa pa. Cryptocurrency is not bound by any state or government. Thus, anyone can use it. Now, there be issues, disputes, and discrepancies. Are there provisions or law that govern such issues? Not to mention that the laws, like the international laws, are harder to enforce. Who will be the authority for justice on this? That's a good question. Um, so, yung sinasabi ni Ace dito nga, kasi nga, Diba, the centralized cryptocurrency, so technically, walang isang gobyerno na naghahawak dito. Um, and at the same time, um, well, finance, eh, monetary system pa rin siya, diba? So, 
potential pa rin na magkakaroon ng mga awayan or mga disputes nga or mga discrepancies na nangyayari. Uh, so, ang, ta- ang tanong really is, sino yung magiging liable, right? Um, and interesting naman kasi may mga organizations ngayon na, like for example, the the Bitcoin Council, or the Blockchain Council, sorry, na talagang they, they try to look for ways to enforce. But again, coming back, yung kung i-read mo talaga yung white paper ng, ng, ano, ng Bitcoin, yung idea, yung thought kasi nun, ay, yung parang goal niya is para hindi makontrol by any centralized authority ang financial system natin. So, na medyo nagiging, ano siya, no? nagiging chicken and egg situation siya na papaano ba talaga yung pag-enforce nun? Um, or papaano ba talaga yung pag-align uh, nun? So, I think it's a matter of first, dapat maintindihan muna ng iba't ibang gobyerno, ng iba't ibang mga organizations kung ano nga ba talaga yung mga yung capacity and limitations ni uh, ni Bitcoin or other blockchains. And then from there, siguro dun, dun natin, pag na start na siya regulate across different countries, each country would have a different way to enforce that. Kasi kahit dito naman, kahit hindi sa Web3, di ba? Kahit sa ibang technologies natin, for example, technology, for example, sa TikTok, di ba? Parang si TikTok, iba yung pag enforce Parang bawal, for in, in certain countries, hindi pa doon monetize si TikTok. In certain countries, pa doon monetize si TikTok. So essentially, each of these uh, governments, I think, would have their own way of being able to manage these disputes then and discrepancies uh, na makikita natin. So it's a matter of being able to see as each of these government mature in the technology side uh, and understanding Web3, paano ba nila maa-apply yun sa kanilang own country? And then doon na yun, mga citizens ng country will be involved in that. So ayan, siguro mag-entertain tayo ng last two questions. Mayroon ako nang pwede yes. ko, ma'am. What do you think Ethereum will Sorry. what do you think Ethereum will pass the Bitcoin since smart contracts, NFTs, DeFi, and others are under Ethereum? Sorry, wait lang po. I think nawala. Nawala po ba ako? Andyan po po ba? Andyan naman, ma'am. Yung share screen na lang. Ako na lang, 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 lang ma'am mag-share screen. Ah, sige, sige. Okay po. Uh, what do you think Ethereum will... Oh. Ah, if... Ang tanong po ata ni... Tama ba? Sino po nagtanong na ito? Hada, ma'am. Ah, si Ada. Oh, hello po. Okay, so yung tanong is, um, if... Ethereum will potentially ano Bitcoin no ah uh, if ma overstep ni Ethereum si Bitcoin um so I'm not talking on behalf of Bitcoin on this or for anyone siguro sa aking input lang din um at the end of the day I think utility is important utility yung meaning ng utility right is may purpose yung kanyang ano may purpose siya outside of just being a monetary system Um, tapos yung tanong at ay uh, tanong dito is if ano po if uh, si Ethereum which is another different blockchain po yan siya tapos may Bitcoin blockchain si Ethereum blockchain tapos uh, si Ethereum network tapos may Bitcoin network din so different blockchains din sila umiikot ngayon si Ethereum po kasi ano yan parang marami siyang utilities pwede po siya maging smart contract meaning uh, parang uh, under the blockchain na rin po kung may kontrata kayo under the blockchain na siya registered NFTs, so yung nakikita niyo pong mga um, artworks ngayon is an example, pero hindi lang po artworks yan, pwede yung iba't ibang NFTs, no? But NFTs is like, um, parang tokenized na yung iyong creation, ganun. DeFi, decentralized finance, and others, ganun. Yung mga different applications yan, or utilities ng Ethereum. Ngayon, ang tanong po dito is, kung si Ethereum ba daw, currently, I think si Ethereum is nasa mga 2,000 Uh, USD, parang ganun po ata yung peg niya. Then, of course, si, Bitco- uh, si Bitcoin a lot more than that, diba? Ang tanong is if ma-overtake ba daw ni Ethereum? Personally, I think um, mahirap pa rin kasi si Bitcoin, right, kaya siya may big value or store of value kasi it's um, it's essentially um, as is siya. It's It's, it's it's in its simplest form, kumbaga. So, kaya natin, if you think about, kaya may mga ibang uh, ibang believers na pupwedeng ipeg si 
Bitcoin as a gold standard, kumbaga, meaning na para siyang gold, yung yung value ni gold na parang nagiging peg siya for other different ano items. Parang ganun din yung nagiging idea for Bitcoin. Kaya feel ko parang si Bitcoin kasi talagang mas na ano siya, na na-retain niya yung kanyang value kasi nga more people are subscribing to it. Ah uh, yes, kumbaga father of all. Kaya yun yung belief. But again, Like I said, yung price action kasi, sorry, nagiging mas complicated na siya, pero yung price action kasi, it's still driven by people sentiment. So, kung ano yung reception ng buong buong world, ba? Diba? Kung mas tingin nila mas may value si Ethereum, syempre, mas maraming mag invest kay Ethereum, mas tataas siya. So, hindi ko pa yun madedictate yung future. Hindi ko din masasabi. Hindi ko, uh, I'm just speaking on what I know. Um, pero, at the same time, si Si Bitcoin kasi, may other aspect siya. Scarce siya. May scarcity siya. Nag-ano siya. Nag-having siya. Um, tapos, ano nga siya. As is siya. Simplified siya. ba? Diba? Uh, tapos, maraming different aspects pa yan. Um, but again, I'm speaking on just myself on this one. Um, and syempre, kahit ano naman mangyayari, pwedeng mangyari sa, ano, ba? Diba? Sa future. Kaya nga nakikita natin yung mga AI ngayon. Kasi nga, ang daming pwedeng possible na mangyari in the future that we don't know. Ayan. Okay. Miss okay. Rachel, parang tinatanong daw nila yung attendance link daw po. <laughs> ah, ayan, excited na sila. So, before we proceed to the um attendance link, so, thank you so much, ma'am, for your uh, time and your um patience in answering the questions po. I think madami talagang questions ng ating uh, mga participant for this afternoon. So, um, let me just um, present po the uh, Certificate of Appreciation. So, this Certificate of Appreciation is awarded to uh, Camille Puentes Pina for sharing her invaluable insight and expertise as the resource person of the ILCDB Tech for Ed webinar entitled Basics of Web 3.0, a two-hour webinar as part of the celebration of the National ICT Month 2023 conducted by the DICT Regional Operations Office Region 4A in partnership with Bitskuela on June 20, 2023 via Zoom platform and also Facebook Live. Given this 20th day of June 2023, signed by our regional director, Director Cheryl T. Ortega. Once again, ma'am, thank you so much for your time and your patience. Po. Thank Ayan. you. So, Ayan. so looking forward po kami sa mga more trainings po na ating um, io offer sa ating mga participants. Ayan. Uh, maraming maraming salamat din po sa DICT sa pag-invite uh, po sa hana. Nag, super nag-enjoy po ako. At salamat. Ang daming, ang daming nagtatanong. Ang daming nag-ano uh, din ko contribute sa discussion. No? So maraming salamat po sa inyo lahat. Uh, napakarami nyo po at uh, salamat po sa pagbigay ng uh, bit of your uh, time. I know important din yung mga oras niya. So, salamat po sa pagdalo at pakikinig. So thank you. Ayan. Sa <laughs> <laughs> ating mga Zoom and Facebook Live participants. So, thank you so much po. And now po, let us proceed to the um, at this. Uh, iniintay na lang lahat to kanina pa. So, this is our <laughs> attendance link. Kindly um, scan na lang po this QR code and also this will be posted po on our chat box and also to, to our Facebook Live audience. Ayan, magpo-post din po kami sa nakapin po sa ating chat box. Okay. Ayan, Miss Camille, thank you so much po ulit. You and, and ayan po, so sa mga susunod po nating uh, mga webinars and trainings po, kindly uh, check on our Facebook, uh, official Facebook page po yung ating DICT Region 4A. Calabarzon, and also our provincial um, Facebook pages po ng ating mga uh, provinces, the DICT Region 4A Cavite, DICT Region 4A Laguna, DICT Region 4A Batangas, DICT Region 4A Rizal, and DICT Region 4A Quezon. So yun po, um, 
Doon po kami nagpo-post ng aming mga trainings and webinars po each month para po doon sa mga ino-offer namin na fee training po. Ayan. So, this attendance link po is available until 12 midnight lang po. Kaya po yung mga mag re-rewatch sa ating Facebook Live, ay sa ating live on Facebook. So, yun. Pwede po kayo mag-attendance din para um, makakuha po kayo ng digital certificate. Ayan. Yung mga certificates po namin, digital certificate issuance, um, medyo may may matagal lang po pinaprocess. Pero once na na-complete na namin yung inyong mga responses is mabibigyan naman po kayo. Ano po? Yes po, isa lang po yung ating evaluation and attendance link para hindi na kayo mahirapan. Ano? Isa na lang po. Once na nakakomplete po kayo ng attendance, um, yun na po yun. Isa lang po. Ayan. So, any question po? Once again, Ms. Camille, thank you so much po. Thank you so much po. Have a good day ahead sa lahat. Sana mas kukulam niyo mamaya. <laughs> Thank you. Ayan. Let, um, proceed naman po muna tayo sa ating closing remarks. So, to deliver the uh, closing remarks po, our Tech for Ed um, uh, lead and also the DICT Laguna Provincial Officer, Ms. Hazel B. Pagaw. Good afternoon, everyone. I would like to express my heartfelt gratitude to our esteemed resource speaker, Ms. Camille Puentes Pina, Chief Product and Technology Officer of Bitsquela, for her outstanding delivery of this afternoon's webinar. Her expertise and insights have enlightened us all and provided valuable knowledge during this momentous occasion of NICP Month. I would also like to extend my sincere appreciation to the Regional Office of the ICT Region 4A and my esteemed colleagues in the Tech for Ed project for making this webinar a success. Furthermore, we extend our heartfelt thanks to all the participants who joined us on Zoom. Your active participation and enthusiasm have made this webinar truly engaging and worthwhile. We hope that you have gained valuable insights and takeaways that will empower you in your journey within the realm of Web 3.0. Once again, I wish you all a wonderful afternoon filled with inspiration and continued growth in the ever-evolving world of technology. Happy National ICT Month. Ayan, once again, thank, thank you so much po, Ma'am Hazel, the Tech for Ad. Tech for Ed lead po for the DICT Region 40. Uh, so before we let you go, uh, we would like to request everyone to let us have our quick photo of po. Or a while lang po at So, ayan guys, so please, please hold your beautiful smile. So, ayan. 
Yes, we have 10 slides po. So, kindly hold on your smile po. Saying po in 1, 2, 3, smile. Uy. Yan. Nag-take na ating photos. Ayan. Yeah. Keep holding on your smiles po. Ayan. So. Yes po. Yes. Third slide na po tayo. Fourth slide. Yes. Okay. Once again, po, thank you so much po for attending this webinar and hope uh, fully makita namin kayo sa mga susunod pa naming webinar and hope you learned a lot today. Ako personally, I learned a lot from Ms. Camille. Ayan. Thank you so much po. Thank you po. <laughs> Ayan. So again, um, in behalf of uh, the regional uh, office po of the ICT Region 4A, Palabarzon. We, I am greeting you all the national, happy National ICT Month po. Ayan. Bye-bye po. Thank you po, Ms. Rachel. Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> Kindly accomplish na po yung ating attendance no para po sa uh, sending of the digital certificate. Thank you. Kita kits na lang sa susunod guys. Thank yes, you. Yes ma'am. Bye po. <laughs> Thank you po.